Hello students, Mr. Hatfield here, and I feel it's a good idea if I put up some videos to show you how to do some of the calculations that we need you to do in the mole unit here in chemistry at Sanger High School. So we're going to do that right now. I have a flow chart over here, and I want you to see that the mole is at the very center of the flow chart. It's at the center because we use the mole as a bridge to connect different quantities. So for example, we can connect moles to grams. To do that, we'll be using the molar mass, which we get from the periodic table. Or we can connect moles to liters, to the volume of a gas. At STP, we use this number, 22.4 liters per mole of any ideal gas at STP. And if we want to go moles to particles, which could be atoms, could be molecules, we'll be using Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Now, before I start setting up these example problems, I'm just going to emphasize again that the way we have success is that we use fractional setups with cancellation. And the fractional setups work best if we make sure that whatever we're given for the problem, that we put in the number, the unit, and the substance. You do that as part of your setups. So let's start with the simple moles to grams conversion problem. To do this, it may be handy to have a calculator. Let's say that we start off with, say, 20 grams of water. So I write 20, that's the number, and I write grams, that's the unit, and I write H2O because, of course, that's the formula for water. Number, unit, substance and we put this as a fraction over one inside parentheses. Now, since we have uh, the number unit substance, we know that this unit and substance is not the answer we want. We want to go again from grams to moles. So to answer this question, we're going to need to get the molar mass, which we obtained from our periodic tables. If we consult the periodic table that's given in class, it will tell us that one hydrogen is 1.008 grams per mole. But we need two of those hydrogens because water's formula is H2O. So we'll take that 1.008, we'll multiply it by two, and we'll end up with this number, 2.016. We'll also need one oxygen. And again, the periodic table will tell us that we need 16 grams per one oxygen. So we take those two numbers and we add them together, and this is our molar mass for water. We say 18.016 grams per mole of water. Now what may not be obvious is that this is a conversion factor that we can use to convert from grams to moles. And the way we do it is we say, hmm, it's this many grams per one mole of water. Okay, so this actually is this many grams per one mole, and these are just two different ways of saying the same thing. So, since we have grams of water at tops of the first expression, we're going to put the same grams of water at the bottom of the next expression. And we're going to attach this number to it because, according to the periodic table, you have one mole of that substance, you have that many grams. So we put that number down here. Now at this point you may ask, well, if that's here, what goes on top? We still don't know what we're looking for, but we're trying to go from grams to moles. That's what we're trying to do. So we're going to have to put moles on the top. And it's automatically going to be one because when we went to the periodic table and we took the numbers for the two hydrogens and one oxygen, we were calculating the mass in grams per one mole. It may not be obvious, but this is one mole of water. So now we see that we have grams of water on the top of the first are given and grams at the bottom, which is from our periodic table. And so we can now cancel the grams. And whatever our answer is going to be, it's going to be in moles of water. Just like that. Now, you can see just by looking at it that the number we have here is just a little bit less than the 20 grams that was given. So we're basically just going to take the 20 and we're going to divide it 
by 18.016, our molar mass per water. And we're gonna get a number, and it turns out this is a number that's slightly more than one gram, we'll say 1.11 mole of water. But that's what we do. We take whatever is given, in this case it's the grams of water, and we write that out as a fraction over one. And since we know that we're going from moles to grams, we know we're going to be using the molar mass, which comes from the periodic table, as our conversion factor. And so we get that number from the periodic table, we put the number for the grams in the bottom, we put the one mole on the top, and so we do the math. In this case, it's division. Number on the top divided by number on the bottom. We ignore the ones, they're just placeholders. And so we get this answer, which is moles of water. But suppose instead of being given grams, we're given moles. What would we do then? Well, let's find out. So let's say that instead of being given grams, we're given moles, and we'll use a different substance this time. We're going to use uh, carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide's formula is CO2. Let's say we have 40 grams of, oh, sorry, that's a mistake, because I didn't want to do grams, remember? I've already done grams of the water, grams to moles. I need to do moles to grams. So let's make this even simpler. Let's say that we have five moles of carbon dioxide. And so I write that as a fraction over one. Number five, the unit is the mole, the substance is carbon dioxide, CO2. We want to go to grams. So again, since we're going to be converting uh, grams to moles or moles to grams, here we're starting with moles, we're still going to need the molar mass that we get from the periodic table. So looking at our periodic table, it will tell us that one carbon is 12.01 grams. We need two oxygens. So oxygen in the periodic table is 16, so we're gonna need two times 16, which is 32. But now we just take those numbers and we add them together, and here's our conversion factor, 44.01 grams per mole of CO2. Now, last time we were given grams, and this number, 44.01, still goes with the grams, but we're not going to put the, that number on the bottom because our given isn't grams, our given is moles. So since we have moles of CO2 on the top, we're going to put that moles of CO2 on the bottom, like that. And it's, again, this is just grams per one mole of substance. So this is going to be one mole on the top, and this is going to, we're going to put the 44.01 grams of CO2 on the top. And it should be clear that at this moment that we can cancel the moles of CO2. And this time, instead of dividing like we did when we went from grams to moles, instead of dividing, Everything on the bottom is one, so the way we solve this is that we just multiply it across the top. And so if we do this, five times 44.01, a calculator can be helpful. It's just multiplication. And we end up with this answer, 220.5 grams of CO2. It's grams of CO2 because that's the unit of substance that didn't get canceled.